March 10th, 2020, Westchester University of Pennsylvania President Chris Florentino shuts down the campus to students for the remainder of the semester and joins the manipulative leaders across the U.S. who use the latest virus outbreak to spread panic. Coronavirus does not kill indiscriminately. The under 4% of the coronavirus infected that die are usually very old or have other issues such as compromised immune systems. Despite the overwhelming majority of people with coronavirus suffering no ill consequences, politicians pretend and run around like chicken little screaming, the sky is falling, and a substantial of the poor population actually believe. News Bulletin to Pennsylvania Westchester University President Christopher Forento. People who are weak and infirm die. It's part of life. The sky is not falling. Coronavirus is fatal to under 4% of those infected. Those that die are unhealthy and at risk. Usually either the elderly or those with compromised immune systems with some underlying issue. College students are by and large healthy and young and the coronavirus will have minimal impact on their lives. Students who go away to college and many like my children who took out loans expected real person-to-person -person education and would never have wasted their money to take credits online. Mr. Forentino, the namby-pamby man behind the devaluing of the Westchester University degree by elevating psychology, political science, anthropology, and sociology from a Bachelor of Arts degree to Bachelor of Science degree, is closing the campus to students and making students earn their credits online. This is what happens when a university president promotes a female, Radha Pagliati, to the Dean of Mathematics and Science degrees. When your lead administrator confuses social theory with hard science, it makes perfect sense to close down an entire university because a few infirm people who should be responsible for taking their own precautions might die. You want to protect the weak and infirm, let them take online courses. Don't make everybody take them. Online courses are no substitute for person-to-person -person instruction, and that is why the disabled and infirm are not satisfied with taking online courses and demand to be educated in the same manner as those not disabled or infirm. An online biology or chemistry lab is not the same as a hands-on lab with an instructor available to assist. A lecturer online is not the same as being present with 20 to 200 students who interact with a professor and ask questions and bring up important points where the disabled and infirm are in a position that endangers themselves and only them, those in a society not disabled or infirm should not have to be placed in a position as if they were disabled or infirm. No one in society should have to sit and ambulate in a wheelchair from the time they get up in the morning until the time they go to bed at night because one person was born without legs and another person lost their legs in an accident. This great nation has never required people to donate blood or give a kidney to save someone else's meager existence. Although now the healthy are burdened to keep the unaware and barely breathing alive for the profit of doctors, hospitals, nursing homes, and pharmaceutical companies. Let the elderly who want to live forever and the others whose existence can be snuffed out with a sneeze live in a bubble. We are not required to stop driving cars to save the lives of those who may be lost in automobile accidents. Closing the campus disrupts student lives and it disrupts their education, while the administrators and staff and professors will still get paid. Of course, it's only the little people that get hurt, not the people in government. Enough is wasted on the elderly and firm. Society should serve our vital population. Keep the colleges open. It's bad enough my kids have to take out student loans to live in dorms with other kids, like other kids who have to take out student loans to be educated, while you've got people who are disabled and elderly 
who will last for years sitting in senior apartments and they've got they get to live there rent free and they get a one bedroom apartment with a living room and a kitchen Take a look at the obituaries of the elderly in their 90s, the local paper celebrating the latest geriatric to reach 100. Prior to reaching the nursing home, many of those without resources lived for decades in one-bedroom apartments paid for by the U.S. citizen taxpayer. Decades of government care. Meanwhile, to obtain a college education, young adult students have to take out tens of thousands of dollars in student loans and have to share one room with one to eight other people while sharing bathroom facilities. Until the government provided college loans, most students did not go into debt. The youth of our country have been enslaved. If we had a court system where judges didn't routinely dismiss cases to deny citizens a jury trial, WCU would be hit with a huge class action suit. The entire Westchester University of Pennsylvania administration should be removed and replaced with men who understand that life goes on. If some 20% of females and 10% of males weren't on antidepressants or anti-anxiety medication rivaling the mother's little helper time period circa 1950 to 70, life would go on. In the first half of the 20th century, despite the indiscriminate devastation of polio leveling victims crippled and dead, people attended schools and colleges for those privileged or wealthy enough, and social gatherings with minor disruptions when the virus was wreaking havoc. Nothing indicates a polio-era type devastation will be revisited, and yet Mr. Friantino shut down WCU when over 99% of the students he is supposed to serve will suffer no ill consequence from keeping the campus open. Ask why those in power before the election seek to scare the voters. Is the coronavirus the new war on terror, the new Syria, the new Serbia, the new ethnic cleansing? President Trump has rejected the notion that the coronavirus is going to cause the end of the world, just as President Trump has rejected the notion that in foreign policy, the U.S. needs to destroy and subjugate other countries by occupying them. Who stands to gain by scaring the gullible and the ignorant prior to the 2020 election? The Orwellian coronavirus propaganda is being used to manipulate the public. Comments submitted will be reviewed prior to publication.